get to our guest list via our Ashraf Lidi for Nice Change in person here with us, Chief Global uh, Strategist, City Index, around the desk here at the SGX. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Martin. Yeah, uh, live. So uh, we were all listening in on this uh, interview with uh, Pascal uh, Lamy, and, you know, we've already had uh, the Fed... MBS focused buying. We've had the ECB bond buying, but conditional. Now you layer on top of that what's going on with uh, with trade. What does that mean for currencies? Well, uh, a, a week ago I was uh, at the CNBC interview here, which is a few days after the decision uh, to raise uh, or to start a QE3. Yeah. People asked me, you know, the same question. And one of the answers that I gave was... The conventional wisdom is dollar negative, right? Yeah. So short dollar EM or short dollar Asia even. But to integrate uh, this particular interview that ah, you had okay. with Mr. Lamy, right. we're all going to get to it. You right. see. Okay. And I said, I'm surprised <laughs> that nobody has mentioned anything about the currency wars. Mm. Because that's what happened in, Oct and, uh, that's what happened in October 2011 uh, when the U.S. announced... Uh, uh, actually, October, sorry. It, it was around October uh, 2010. Mm. And then we went into the G20 meeting in November. I think it was in Asia, and everybody. And that's when they start to step up uh, the criticism of the currency war. And the decision for the QE happened on Thursday. We had an interview on Monday, and I said, "I'm surprised we haven't heard anything." And then on, on Monday evening, we had the Brazilians, uh, who were the you know the original ones. There won't be any trading wars, like Monsieur Lamy said, but there will be some reverberations regarding currency wars. Describe it. Uh, the on, well, you know, basically, you know. If the U.S., uh, uh, how can the U.S. basically dictate other nations on their trade while they are basically de facto depreciating uh, the U.S. dollar and giving very little choice to the Latins or maybe to the Asians to do the same? Mm. The only problem, uh, well, or, or the only difference from two years ago, is that the Brazilians have already countered that by cutting interest rates so sharply to all-time lows mm -hmm. that that weighed on the Brazilian real mm. and Would it pushed the U.S. dollar. Would you go as far to say then, Ashraf, that the U.S. is artificially undervalued? the US dollar well yeah I mean uh, does uh, does the Federal Reserve wake up in the morning and say my, that my goal is to depreciate the US dollar I don't think so that's not the goal. But it is Obama's goal to double exports uh, and they're never gonna say it they're never gonna give up strength in dollar but I mean uh, one of the uh, maybe intended but silent consequences of QE is you get a more competitive dollar every president's goal is to increase of is to increase the uh, the exports of of his country, yeah. uh, whether it's Obama before the elections or whether it is Bush four, two years before the elections, uh, George Bush did it uh, uh, around, around term, the midterm elections in 2002 when he basically declared, in a way, a, a trade on steel. On uh, it was a trade war on on to steal and actually it took a, a year for the WTO to turn that decision but it was effective to help uh, the steel lobby and uh, but but going back here uh, the reason that I don't think we're going to see basically what you call a, a currency war is because the Brazilian real is not as as high as it was two years ago it is actually weak because of the easing policies and the same thing with the rest of the Latin countries but if there is a, a bilateral uh, you know uh, the problems between China and between the U.S., let's say, they will uh, fix it, uh, you know, uh, bilaterally. And if the worst comes to worst, a decision will happen and it will be appealed uh, uh, by, by the WTO and, and so on and so forth. But I think the bottom line regarding what it means for the U.S. dollar and so on and so forth, I think that uh, even though there are some problems with the Eurozone and so on mm -hmm. and so forth, I really think that there is a very important leg up getting ready in the euro and at the expense of well, the u.s dollar uh, back last week we hit 131.70 yes how much more oh i think uh i think we could see one um, just one 135 uh well before uh you know uh, the u.s elections i would say how does that we work? could see the ecb likely to cut rates even more yeah I'm not sure if, and with if, bond buy? if they could cut rates, they're probably going to cut them from 0 0.75 to 0 0.5. Yeah. Uh, but I really think that what we're going through, Martin, is what we went through in March 2009 when uh, the crisis was at its worst point. And then because of the joint central bank action, we had, a, we had the QE1 from the UK and from the US that boosted uh, the markets. You may say the markets are already up ahead of something that already happened. Mm. Uh, uh, but I do think that the joint actions this time will be uh, quite powerful. 135 for the euro. Okay, Ooh. thank you so much. We've got a lot more ahead with our guest host this hour, Ashraf Lighty from City Index. If you have any questions for him, shoot us an email. The address is squawk at cnbcasia.com.
Well, welcome back to Squawk. Let's begin our countdown to trade here in Asia now with our guest host, Ashraf Lighty of City Index. Ashraf, uh, after the Fed rally, risk assets seem to have taken a little bit of a breather. Investors aren't sure which direction to go in. What's your advice? Uh, well, the next week, uh, it's not going to be a week where people have to make some big decisions or big uh, interpretations about the market because it's the end of the quarter. There's going to be a lot of swings up and down. Uh, but I think we, we're going into a Spain again, uh, the stress test issued by, uh, for, for the Spanish banks. Mm -hmm. And with that going to imply that they're going to need 60 billion euros or 70 billion euros at the same time that there's going to be the budget, the 2013 budget by Spain, which we think is going to be approved. What does that mean? Is that still going to mean that Spain will insist that they will not make a formal request for mm -hmm. help, uh, something upon which the banks are, and the market is doing the destabilization a play? Uh, so uh, we think that even if Spain actually does not end up asking for help, it could still be a positive for the risk trade and for the euro, and especially something else is the well, IBEX. Why do the markets <clears throat> want Spain to put their hand out and ask for help? Isn't it um, it's considered supportive for the market, but why is that when other countries are struggling with the conditions? If they want to go it alone because rates are low, um, why not? Well, maybe we have a three seconds or five seconds, but if why the markets want it, because the markets want a, some sort of a guarantee that yields will remain low, right. and only for them to ask will trigger the ECB to buy uh, the Spanish bonos and will be the, the mechanism that will uh, buy the bonds and will uh, prevent any later rebound in bond yield. But here's the thing, the tail risks, uh, uh, as you yeah. have said, Ashraf, from yeah. Europe haven't completely gone away they and gone yet away. the euro and the outlook for the euro, as you so eloquently pointed out, suggests that everything is going to be relatively stable. Something doesn't add up here. The economic risks have not gotten uh, away, uh, but the tail risks have been uh, a, a slightly reduced. In March 2009, when market bottomed at 666 in the S&P, the economic mm -hmm. risks were still there. The tail risks uh, so, uh, sort of were taken out, and the same thing that we saw uh, again in summer 2010. So we here, it's our responsibility. We can even talk about the economy until and, and tomorrow morning and say, has have the problems been solved, or we have to, as somebody said, we have to dance as long as the music <laughs> is playing. Uh, and, uh, and I think if there is a, a strong signal by the central banks to give it all it has, it's very hard to go against what may be called a freight train. So, so what do you do if your, your portfolio is defensive? Very quickly, how do you recalibrate? Well, I mean, uh, you know, you would go for the cyclicals uh, right now for equities, but for, for the currencies, we actually like Euro Yen. Uh, we like the Canadian, we think is going to benefit more from the USQE than the Australian. And uh, we do think silver could go to the mid 40s from the current mid 30s. Okay, thank you for being our guest host. Thank you. Great to have you on the show. That was Ashraf Lighty, of Chi he's Chief Global Strategist with City Index, our guest host bright and early on a Monday morning. Yes, and, 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 and it's very interesting, Michael, that uh, would this be uh, going to be another uh, third of another round of a QE3? You know, we had QE1 and we had the uh, equities uh, going up by um, well over 50 percent. Then we had the QE2 two, and we had around the same thing. Uh, is it too easy to imply that not only a QE3 from the U.S., but a joint effort from the ECB and the Bank of Japan and maybe QE4 from the BOE, would this mean uh, that this could imply another probably 10 to 15 percent upward in uh, world equities in the next three to four months? Do you think that is uh, quite feasible? Um, I'd be very surprised, actually, Ashraf, if that, if that happened. But I've been a little puzzled at the market's reactions to these QE programs. You know, the, the QE programs maybe prevent some damage, but they, as, as Chairman Bernanke and, 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 uh, and President Draghi frequently say, it's, it's not really the main event in terms of stabilizing these economies and, and putting them on a path to sustainable growth. So. <clears throat> You're more expert on what the markets react to than I, than I am, but, but I think of QEs as, at best, slightly dangerous damage yeah. control. Michael,